Um, thank you for that very, very fine uh, introduction and welcome. I'm um, particularly pleased to be able to thank uh, Secretary Ross for what she was saying. There's um, a lot in her talk, of course, and some of the main points for me, in addition to the soils, which is my original background, the link to water. And I had um, 10 years in the, in the Institute of Hydrology in the UK, so that's very, very dear to my heart. And the relay of all that into ecosystem goods and services that we were hearing about. Also very good to hear about the climate um, agenda here in the, in the state, particularly given the fact Marrakesh has just started yesterday formally. And um, the third point really is her reference to the need to achieve greater connectivity across the system. There's a huge amount of uh, material flow, of course, across the food system, but so too the opportunity for improved messaging um, and the, the equitable distribution of wealth creation across that whole system. So they're all good, all good points to bear in mind as we go into this panel. So this, this panel this morning, panel number four, is about computation modeling of food systems, food and biomolecules. Um, it's quite a wide ranging um, level, a set of spatial levels that we'll be dealing with from very, very big to very, very small. And one of the purposes of the meeting is to, is to think about how all these different approaches can actually work more synergistically uh, based around a, uh, the benefit of using a common language. So as we go through the session, just try to spot those, those linking words and to think about how we define them and how we're using them and how they can help us move towards our, our internet. So I'll start, if I may, with just some overview uh, presentation of what I think is going on with the, uh, the food systems and where we can look to link in the other uh, skills that we'll be hearing about this morning. So here we are, um, modeling food systems. I guess the first question is what actually is it we're trying to model? Um, food systems is a phrase that's been used uh, increasingly over the last decade, and it's very clear that it's got traction. Um, what is it? What are food systems? The um, definitions romp across a, a, way, a wide range of literatures. But it's important, I think, to, def to define, in a way, what it is we're talking about today. So first up, is it, are we looking to model the relationships um, among all the food system activities? These are the, 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 the words we're used to, the diagrams we're probably familiar with. Um, these are all the things we do. These are, these are the doing things. All the words end in I-N-G. Um, so I like the diagram for that because it reminds, reminds us that they're doing words. Um, there's a huge amount of modeling potential in that diagram alone. Um, or are we actually more interested in the, in the roles and the motives of all the actors who are undertaking those activities? And depending on where you are in the, in the world, you, you have a different uh, approach to this, but basically that same schema applies to us all in the food system. And of course, we are all in that diagram because we're all consumers at the end. Um, or are we actually more interested in trying to get our handle on the, 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 the drivers which affect the way all these actors undertake their activities, the, the influences that affect their decision making? Another idea is are we actually more interested in modeling the outcomes of all those activities for food security? The so what? What do we get? This is one schema of food security, um, three major components, all of which need to be stable over time. And each of those uh, nine bullets is a, you know, a, a sub significant subject, a discipline area. Um, and again, there's a lot of opportunity for, for synergistic language across that diagram. Or are we actually interested in other outcomes of those food system activities? Are we interested in the livelihood generation for all those actors? Are we interested in the political and social capital that is generated by those activities? Are we interested in the employment and profit for enterprise? And of course, the other angle, and my particular focus in the Environmental Change Institute, is to do with the environmental outcomes of those activities. So all of those activities on slide one have an environmental footprint. Agriculture, of course, is, is a very powerful driver of environmental change. And this slide from um, a recently published UNEP International Resource Panel report is just a summary 
of this substantial piece of work, which just brings together on a single slide some data. These data are not new, they're not, um, it's, just, it's an assessment of literature, but just putting them on a single slide is a salutary message. And of course, the food system is more than agriculture, and as one thinks across all of those activities, we can see that we're looking at about a quarter of all anthropogenic greenhouse gases from the food system as a whole. Plenty of opportunity for mitigation when we think post-farm gate as well as on the agricultural domain. In addition to environment, we know that um, we've got this challenge of, of what's now known the, the triple burden of, of malnutrition. Um, this big report from IFPRI um, makes the point that uh, the globe is not in a good place in terms of nutrition. I just draw attention to the word malnutrition. We've heard it already at this conference, but malnutrition actually means bad nutrition. It doesn't mean undernutrition only. So here's the first sort of pointer about language. We have to be very careful with the language you use and really think about what the word, what the word actually means. There's another um, famous, well here is a definition you're probably all familiar with, which is from the Food and Agriculture Organization, uh, developed in the, in the World um, Food Summit in 96, uh, tweaked a little bit since then. But um, the, the word I put in, in green here is a word that often we kind of read across because we're interested in the access and the nutritious and all that sort of stung, stuff. But actually sufficient is a fundamentally important word today. Um, this was coined 20 years ago or so when sufficient was taken to mean give more to those people who don't have enough. That's, that was what its Im Im implication was. But of course, what sufficient actually means is enough for a particular purpose, the right amount. It doesn't mean always just increase it if you haven't got enough. It actually means the right amount. So here again is another example of actually drilling into the meaning of the word and remembering that this definition is now arguably more relevant today than it was when it was coined uh, 20 years or so ago. If we do a very simple uh, uh, survey, if you will, of the state of the, of the globe and in terms of, of uh, food security, um, we can have a very simple uh, uh, sum, a little piece of, 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 of uh, differentiating the, the way we are all uh, sitting in the world. Over on the left, we've got about a billion people, about a billion. You can argue a little bit about the number, but about a billion who don't have enough calorie, they're, they're hungry. We have on the next box a whole bunch of people, maybe two billion or more, who aren't actually hungry, but they don't have sufficient nutrient. Over on the right, We've got, by my estimate, the literature I've studied, approaching, if not exceeding, 2.5 billion of us with too much uh, calorie, often with insufficient nutrient as well. And so the, 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 the number in the green box, the sweet spot, so to speak, is actually less than half the global population. And that's a, that's a thing to remember. The food system, as we currently see it operating, is satisfactorily su um, supplying the food security status to less than half of us. Why is this? The question I ask is what determines which box any of us fall in? There's a lot of discussion about agriculture in this meeting, but let's start with the nature of the challenge. We start at the top of the diagram. The words that you see in italics are the sorts of words that determine what I have for dinner on a regular basis. They're the sort of words that determine what we as society have for, have for food. They're all uh, very powerful, perhaps affordability is the most powerful for many, but cultural norms and convenience, of course. What determines the, the, the price and the nutrient content of the food that I buy in the store is very much a function of what happens to it by the food, um, the food industry, the food chain actors, and the words in italics there add value, they make the thing more expensive, but they make it edible, and that's something to remember. Down here, we get to the primary production, and this comes off the farm gate, and this sets the basic price of the food and its basic nutrient content, and it's determined by a variety of, of industries that we see there, all of which are dependent on the basic productivity and the diversity and quality of the land. So, oh, it's not that simple. It's not linear, of course. There are massive feedbacks. 
And these feedbacks are all uh, moderated and determined by these environments, these influencing environments that I mentioned earlier, the political environment, the physical environment, the business environment, etc. This actually causes the food system to operate as it does. So if we want to change the ratio in the top boxes, we need to think about not just the actors, but we also need to think about the influencers. So just coming back to some of the language, um, we've had a number of words this, uh, this, uh, this, this meeting already, nutrients, nutritious, nutrition security. Um, what's actually in these words? Going back to the FAO definition, we see the word nutritious in it. Um, what's nutritious mean? Nutritious means it has nutrients in it. Nutrients are, are material. Nutrients are things, they are materials and therefore nutrients are an important contributor to achieving food security. But if we want nutrition security, nutrition security <clears throat> the, um, the, the nutrition community have come up with a modification of that. Essentially it's all the same except for the words I've added in, in bold italics because this is making the point that nutrition security is more than food security. So effectively we've got a hierarchy here and this is where the language is so important. Nutrients are important for food security, and food security is important for nutrition security. If we want to model this system, we need to think about what is it that determines nutrition security, and hence by those definitions, it's the combination of the dietary intake and the health status, and this is largely uh, uh, managed, if you will, at the individual level or the household level. What determines all that? Well, the availability of nutrients, of course, but also factors such as maternal care and health services. And this is generally managed at the community level. And then at the state level, the national level or the international level, we have these wide range of enabling environments to do with infrastructure, uh, social security and the like. So all of that's got to be humming, if you will, for, for nutrition security to be met. And if we're interested in modeling that, we need to understand that we've got a wide range of types of things we need to include. So what are we actually trying to, trying to model? Um, are we interested in the, the, uh, the activities? The food system is a collection of enterprises, it's a collection of activities, and it's the activities that have the environmental footprint. It's the doing words that have the environmental footprint. Are we interested in the social acceptability or the political viability of a proposed intervention? Or are we actually interested in the diet, the outcomes in terms of our nutrition, in which case we're interested in the diversity and the food safety and all this sort of stuff. So there are two ways of thinking about it. Either we're interested in the system that delivers the diet or we're interested in the diet itself. And of course the question is, if you bring these together, have we actually got an integrated food system modeling opportunity? Just to close then, we've got um, our set of activities which lead to a set of food security outcomes. We have our wide range of drivers or influences, demographics, business opportunities, socio-political context and the like, which over the last 100, 200 years or so have led to measurable changes in environment. We have all those things that we're familiar with, including one or two natural drivers about which we frankly can't do very much. But the important thing to remember is that the, the drivers interact and they interact, it's not just climate change and how plants grow, it's that whole combination of drivers interacting on the whole food system. And while the literature is, is perhaps most rich in terms of climate change and uh, crop production, one has to remember that all those other words are important across the whole system. And when the system responds, it responds to the stress, normally driven by a socioeconomic goal, we see feedbacks to the socioeconomic realm, but of course there are also feedbacks to the biophysical realm. And it's this, this, this balance, this trade-off, or hopefully synergies that we're aiming to, to achieve and capture in our models. So that in a way is a quick overview of what, what I consider we're talking about. As we go through the session, we'll see bits of it drilling down into more and more specific areas. <clears throat>